So we had a Do question come in yeah, recently that somebody was struggling with coding an ORIF, which is an open reduction internal fixation. So it's usually abbreviated ORIF. Um, most recently, it was a fasectomy of a C6, C7, and they'd appreciate any help or resources we can give. So. In dealing with um, C6, C7, of course, you're dealing with the spine. And spine is one of, um, uh, one of the most difficult things next to, I'm sure, cardiology and some of the other. But spine can be very difficult because one thing, you can get codes from two different sections for the spine. You can get them out of the 20,000 muscular sec section and 60,000 neurological. So it gets very confusing as to what we're doing on the spinal codes. And then, of course, the doctors, their abbreviation, they're going to use um, levels or discs or talk about segments or inner spaces, and it gets a little confusing as well. Um, so first, we look at, of course, we have the spinal column or vertebra, and it's divided into the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccyx. So cervical C1 through C7, thoracic T1 through T12, lumbar's L1 through L5. Sacral is S1 through S5, which actually when you're born, they are individual. And then as you grow um, older, they fuse together. And then the coccyx. So in, and we have uh, put some pictures in here. Mine aren't gory like Alicia's. But um, so just looking, now we're looking from top down. So you're standing above a spinal column looking down. So the yellow part there, of course, is your spinal cord. So everything's going to encompass around the spinal cord, keeping it safe. Um, so we have anterior and posterior. So um, that's very important when it gets to spinal coding. And then you can see the facets as well. Now, if you ever do any pain management, anesthesia, uh, orthopedics, neurology, they do talk about facet injections. So that's something different as well. We need to keep in mind those facets and how they all work. And then have it down a little bit more. So the spinal cord, of course, goes through each vertebra, and then it will branch out in between each vertebrae. So that's where all your nerves will come out. So each vertebra has four processes. They have an upper and a lower, and that makes up that facet joint. So I'm going to have another picture as well. But we have a segment, and they would, you know, a doctor would describe that as C3 or L4 or something. That's the segment. So that is that single vertebral bone, that single one, and then there's an inner space. They would label that, so if you're looking through documentation, you're looking for C3, C4, L1 to L2, something like that. That's the inner space. That's non-bony. That's that gelatinous mush in between each of the discs that cushions them, and that's what keeps the nerves from irradiating. So when people have back pain, it typically is because those that cushion is gone and those two discs are pushing on each other now and hitting that nerve. So it depends on which nerve they're hitting, where on your body you're going to have pain. So um, I have another picture to show that a little bit more. So we have each of the discs, and you can see the space in between, that intervertebral disc. It's a little gray space in between each of those discs. So that's what we're, that's that cushioning in between there. So as each of those um, facets can come out and they connect, so it's very, um, it can be very difficult now. We need to look at, we have the anterior and the posterior. That depends on the type of surgery that's going to be done. So when we get into some of these surgical procedures, we can go down a little bit more. So we need to keep a couple things in mind when you're looking at this, um, when you're talking about coding for spines. The diagnosis is very important, and I have some examples of that. We're going to look at the approach. Is it anterior or is it posterior? There's different codes for that. The location, 
course, cervical, thoracic, spinal, sacral, what are we talking about? And the type of procedure that's being done. So those are some things you're looking at. Now AAPC has a really good forum out there, a really good post in their knowledge center, and I've also given the link that they list five different principles that you determine for spine surgery. So if the provider is performing a decompression or a disectomy, then we begin with that single code. Then if they document an arthrodesis or what we call a fusion, they're fusing those two bones together so that they won't move. Then we have to select a code for that as well, the location and the approach of that fusion. If they document a bone graft, so if they had to take bone from another part of the body or if they harvest, you know, if they grew bone. So there's two different types of bone grafts that you could have. And then there's an add-on code for that. So we can see how this can get really complicated. There's so many different little steps and things to add on. If they document that they used instrumentation, a fixation, a plate, a rod, something like that, um, those are separate codes as well. So there's gonna be another procedure for those codes. And then if they document anything else, subtype of equipment used, um, harvesting of something else, uh, you know, sometimes they inject cells. So there's different um, other procedures that might be done. So there could be a lot of codes when you look at one spinal surgery. You could have three, four, five, six codes, depending upon how many levels you did, depending upon where it was and what was done. So there's the link for that um, AAPC um, blog that they had. So when we're looking at um, the types of procedures you can, you're doing, you can do anterior or anterior lateral or posterior or posterior lateral or a lateral transverse. So those are fusions that can be done. So they either come in from the front or they come in from the back. So those are the two different approaches that they use. So when we're coding posterior, it's very important to look at the number of levels that they did. Um, L1, L2, L3, how many levels did they do? T1, T2, T7, T8, T9, how many levels? There's a family of codes in spine surgery that look at posterior and anterior approaches for a spinal deformity. So that's very important. Every one of them says a spinal deformity. That's where some of your diagnosis is gonna come in. So you could have another example is, I picked out another code, 63270, laminectomy for excision of intraspinal lesion other than neoplasm, um, intradural in the cervical area. So for example, your diagnosis might be osteomyelitis, I know it's unspecified, but you might have osteomyelitis. That could go along with that procedure because they're taking out something other than a neoplasm. So it's very important to know your diagnosis as well when you're coding these. When instrumentation is used, you have to select the type that it is, the number of levels involved, and the placement of that instrument. And this is where that back te bat technique is wonderful in this um, section, this family of codes, because you could be using a wire, you could be using a rod, you could be using different things, and it depends on where they're connecting and where they stop, where they begin and where they terminate. It's very important. So the question was a facectomy. A facetectomy so, is a procedure to remove a portion of the vertebrae, or more than one, so you could be removing a portion of a vertebrae or a vertebrae or two, you know, to relieve pressure and pain. So we can't just say what's the code for ORIF of a C6, C7, because like I showed you those steps, is it a decompression? Did they do this? Did they add that? What kind of instrumentation was this? What kind of open reduction internal fixation was this? Now, if it's a fracture, that's different as well. So there's different coding, um, the fracture. So you're either with a fracture, you got to do some something else because typically with a fracture, something else is going to happen. You're going to rub in that inner space or something's going to happen. There is one fracture code um, of the spine and that is for that um, axis and atlas, the C1 and C2 that they talk about or, you know, up 
more up the top of the spine, the base, so it's dealing with kind of the head, the jaw, that area. So we have to look at, it could be one of those three 60,000 codes that this um, facetectomy um, was dealing with. And then you got to look at the type of instrumentation that was used. So in the ORF, what what fixation did they use? And then did they do a graft? Did they pull something out of another place to um, cement it in there? Or how did they do it? A really great resource for anything orthopedic is Karen Zupko. So this link here brings you to orthopedic coding education. You can sign up for a free newsletter with them. And she has other other than orthopedics as well, but um, they are really good with orthopedics. And so you would get a newsletter. I think I get one every day and it's got just a different blog or different article or information in it. So it's a very useful resource. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.